time for some real education. Eric Blair, you know him as George Orwell, he wrote a little book called 1984. We've talked about it a couple times. It's a dystopian social science fiction novel, and it was published in 1949, but he finished it in 1948. Ergo, why 1984? It's just he decided to do the inverse number. Anyway, its themes include totalitarianism, surveillance, and the repression of people and ideas. In 1984, the world has fallen into an endless cycle of propaganda and war. Yeah, and this is the third week. We're, we're wrapping up the next two days, the third week of our dystopia month on the Dr. Duke show when it comes to our instant classics. The inaugura inauguration of Joe Biden is ushering in a new age of censorship where g members of government are gleefully shutting down and de helping the tech companies deplatform people for the grave sin of voting for a different president. We're living in times now, uh, unprecedented times in American history, where much of what the dystopian novelist of the 20th century wrote, warned us about the bad things were going to happen when you get collectivist government, when globalism becomes the key, when socialism has its way. And now here we are. It is no longer fit to say these things are coming. It is no longer fit to say, if we don't change our ways, this is what's going to happen to us. It is now appropriate to say it's here. And it's not clear we're ever going to be able to get rid of it now, because if you look at the history of countries who slid to where we have slid to, there's no going back. You don't climb back up that muddy slope. George Orwell tells us this, another quote from his marvelous 1984, about wealth and possessions and uh, materialism and how all of this con uh, contributes to the ongoing push towards socialist reorganization of the country. It was possible, no doubt, to imagine a society in which wealth, in the sense of personal possessions and luxuries, should be evenly distributed. In theory, you could imagine such a thing. While power did remain in the hands of a small privileged caste. Right there, by the way, you have America today. Real power is in, a, in the hands of non-elected, incredibly plu uh, rich plutocrats. And the rest of us now are being told that what is remains for us, the little that remains for us, must be distributed among the proletariat the same way. Well, all while power remains in the hands of this small privileged caste. But in practice, what we know it never works. But in practice, such a society could not long remain stable. For if leisure and security were enjoyed by all alike, the great mass of human beings who are normally stupefied by poverty would become literate and would learn to think for themselves. And when once they had done this, they would sooner or later realize that the privileged minority had no function and they would sweep it away. In the long run, a hierarchical society was only possible on the basis of poverty and ignorance. Pretty interesting discussion about where we are and how we got here, and it's getting worse. The fewer at the top, not content just to be rich, the Jeff Bezos of the world, not content to be uh, uber billionaires, almost trillionaires in wealth. That's not enough. Now they must use their wealth to override government, to uh, do the hit jobs that radical leftist politicians don't have the law behind them to do but their money allows them to do. Shocking, Orwell knew what he was talking about, and it's only gonna get worse, people.